Yeah, like um, where the university helped us incorporate the company, draft a shareholders agreement, and helped us navigate, you know, dealing with lawyers at that point, which is mm. just completely alien to me. Yeah, that must have been a really confusing process, right? Yeah, man, because like like every business that I've done before, like I said, the, the nightclub stuff, the chauffeur stuff, like it's, it was all a bit like, a little bit Wild West, right? Like it wasn't like, um, they weren't like completely formal, yeah. proper businesses. They were just like, um, things you can get, you can get going tomorrow without, you know, People don't ask you for paperwork, you never know, yeah. right? Like, um, like the, the law stuff, so particularly in fintech where might, a lot of the viewers might be interested, did you have to get, is it regulated by the FCA? And So we're, we're not regulated. Okay. Um, we, we will be at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and if, so firstly, what we do falls out of the scope of, of the FCA. Okay. Um, just, it's asset backed finance, and we only, we only deal with certain types of investors, which means that it's not currently regulated by the FCA. Okay, yeah. So firstly, that might change, um, which is fine. Uh, and secondly, we might start doing other product, uh, other products, which means that we do have to be regulated. For example, mm. if we wanted to start, so right now the minimum deposit with us is fifty thousand uh, pounds, and you have to be a high net worth investor, or or a fund or something like this. Um, if we want to start accepting, like you know, non professional investors, people who want to deposit say a thousand pounds or five thousand pounds or a hundred pounds or something like, or something like that, uh, we have to be regulated. Yeah. Um, so and that's something we, we might consider at some point. Mm. But that'll, that'll come with scale and time, as you said. So, so right now, the we were the size of the team, and, and the admin required to accept. Um, so, so let's say we're accepting a minimum deposit of a thousand pounds. We'd need fifty people to reach fifty thousand pounds as a deposit. Yeah, right? which is a lot of admin. Yeah, because right now our minimum is fifty grand, so it's one person. Yeah, so it's a lot so easier. Like, yeah, and no one, no one deposits fifty grand anyway. Everyone's yeah. like, <laughs> average is like one fifty or something else. Yeah. Um, so how, in the beginning, did you go about convincing these high net worth investors to invest in you, having just been, you're just uni students yeah. with an idea? Uh, with great difficulty, man. It was, um, it was tough. Like it, yeah. it was like, so, um, so the first thing that was quite helpful for us is that we were a spin out of, of Warwick University. So like a lot of investors, that was, our, it was, it was like our calling card to begin with. Yeah. Uh, where we go to investors and say, look, we're, you know, we give them the pitch about the business, exactly what we do. Uh, and then say, and we're a spin out company of our university. And that, for a lot of conversations, it might not, I mean, naturally, it wasn't the, the, the deciding factor for any of these investors, but it kept them kept them uh, kind of interested in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot better than, kind of, at the time, it was a lot better than not being a spin out of the university, right? Uh, and, and we weren't regulated as well, as you know. So, like, you know, not being regulated, but being a spin out of the university, people were like, okay, maybe there's, maybe mm-hmm. there's something here. Uh, so, that was the first thing. Uh, the second thing was, uh, just being, in, you know, we had to kind of make the product watertight. So we had to make make sure the investors could understand that we knew what we were doing and that they knew what they're investing in. Uh, and then at that point, it's like it's up to them to make a decision. Right? Yeah. So uh, you know, if the price they felt was right at the time, you know, when we had no money in the business, we had to offer our investors a slightly um, higher yield, which mm-hmm. meant we were making as much money. So back, so right now, our investors are earning yields, you know, between seven and ten percent, eight and ten percent on their money. Back then, they were earning like twenty percent. Yeah. So like the first few, the first six months, people were getting twenty percent on their money, which is like it targets a certain type of investor, an investor who's comfortable with that level of risk. Um, but it was risky, right? Because mm. um, what people, I mean, without trying to get kind of too boring about this, uh, what people don't understand about this type of investment is that not only do you have the risk of the underlying asset, but there's the risk of the people running the business knowing what they're doing. Yeah. And it's like. Naturally, we know we know more about what we're doing now than we did before. Right? So it's not that we were completely clueless, but it's just that it's been a learning curve. Right? Yeah. Um, and so offering twenty percent returns at the time was, was probably about fair. Awesome. So I guess moving on from that now. So you're out of university. It's just you and Katham working out of Woking. Or are you? No, we're here, man. Oh you, no, but before oh, you sorry, had the, sorry, you yeah, had the yeah. office. <coughs> in um, working for a while was that? No, so it started out. Oh man, yeah, so it started out was, so we graduated literally the next day, no, we graduated, we went out in Guildford that night, and then um, the next day, yeah. like first thing in the morning, like 8 o'clock in the morning, we went to the Starbucks on, on the A3, okay. just outside Guildford, um, and like got to work, so from there, it's 24 hour Starbucks, yeah. so we used to go there every day from like 8 o'clock in the morning until like 3, 4 o'clock at night, right? like crazy stupid days. Because that's what we thought was the way to do it, right? We, we didn't we didn't know any better. We thought like the, like when you don't know when you don't know what to do next, mm. all you have is time. 
uh, uh, we, we didn't have another child, right? So all we had was time, and we just had to, like, find out what to do next. Because um, even if that is searching for a mentor, yeah. searching for an advisor to tell you what to do next, but it meant there were a million things to do with only so many hours in every day, and you know, we didn't sleep too much, but we were, we were just doing a lot of work in the Starbucks. Uh, and then business picked up, we did a few trades, we got a bit of money, um, and we moved to, so one of my friend's dad's, dad runs an engineering, runs an engineering company, and he gave us like uh, access to a little office he had underneath his like, stairs. It's like, have you seen Harry Potter? Yeah. You know, the cover he lives in. Yeah. It's like that. Something like that. Exactly <laughs> like that. Exactly but like enough that. enough room for you and Cathan. <laughs> No, no, no. We, did, we were really close. We were like, <laughs> like no, no. Um, but yeah, enough, enough space when we go. Yeah. And uh, we were there for a bit as well. And then we moved to Woking, mm. like a small two-person office. And the team grew. There was four of us. And then we moved to London in last year, 2017. Mm. So going back a little bit there, when you mentioned in, in that time where you were trying to find out what to do, even if it's approaching mentors, what sort of mentors helped you and how valuable were they in the process? Um, mentors, man. So, and it could just be someone, even like your parents, dropping you a line of advice or yeah. something like that. Did anything stick with you along the <coughs> journey? It's weird. So, like, you, you take a. It, it's hard to. Um, I think it's hard to to learn who you should take advice from, right? Like, like everyone has something to offer. Right? Yeah. Everyone you meet has something to offer. But then some people are offering you like like, you might meet ten people who are in your eyes super successful running multi-billion, multi-million pound companies uh, and you might ask them the same question and, and they'll give you 10 different answers and you know, like, well, what does that mean? Like, does it mean that, that they're all wrong and one of them is right or does it mean that they're all right in their own way? So like learning how to balance conflicting advice I think was, was uh, important. Like, yeah. It's just valuing everything, right? like, like not being so headstrong at that point in your, in, in your career where you know, you're very early stage and, and just not believing that you know everything, not believing that you know something that you think sounds great is definitely the right way because everyone like the other nine of those people will offer you advice which you know is, is on, on the same topic but just a different different viewpoint different, different, yeah. different viewpoint uh, so like we I have some some kind of uh, advisors and mentors that I met you know back then that, that are still you know that we're still working with now and some of them we're starting to do business with now as well like mm. it's just been like a two two and a half year like almost an interview, right? Whether they've they've got to grow with us. Yeah. I mean, there's this one, there's this one guy, uh, great guy. Um, he he's a chairman of a, a pretty large alternative investment fund, uh, and he. Oh. I think <coughs> we'll just pick up straight away. So yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a chairman of this. Um, yeah. It's working. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So. Uh, of this pretty large alternative investment fund and. Uh, I remember somehow he, he found out about us. I think we were pitching at some event because you know we, we were getting ourselves out as much as we could in the first few months. And uh, he took us a line and said, "Look, come and meet us." Um, and you know, you're probably too early stage for us, but um, let's kind of a chat. I remember walking in uh, to to a boardroom like, like this, right? And uh, there was like five kind of guys uh, from this fun sitting there, and just me. And I felt so out of my depth. Yeah. Like, uh, and I remember leaving this meeting. My, my head was fried like it, it, was, it was mad and I just remember thinking um, like those are the ones you learn the most from right? where like they've asked you so many questions that you just don't know the answer to mm. or questions that you haven't been asked before questions that they've asking, they're asking in a different way to what you're used to uh, and those are the ones you learn the most from uh, and, and so remember my point is uh, that guy I've met with every kind of three four months since then uh, and only now two and, a half, two and a half years down the line looking for a credit line of like 10 million quid yeah um only now can we potentially start working together. But he, like, along the way, he's just been so helpful. He's been a mm. useful guy, uh, a very knowledgeable guy um, to, to to know. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it's just. Um, I think it's nice to know that there are kind of people out there who are you know who are willing to help. Mm. Uh, there was no immediate uh, benefit to him, right? Like uh, I remember, he he said to me at the time. Um, like when I when I left, I, I left the room with him, and he he was like, "Look, um, you're very early stage for us right now, but I like what you've done. Um, you're the kind of person I want to do business with, and so let's keep in touch." And we have, yeah, true to his word, we, we have kept in touch. Like you know, everyone says that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, let's of keep course. In touch. <laughs> and like he actually kept in touch, and uh, yeah, it's, it's potentially turning into mm. something now. So I think that's something valuable that people <coughs> should take forward is that take advantage of the people you know. Always be willing 
to to give that that, that guy Definitely. didn't have to no, no, do no, anything no, no. you didn't have to let me come interview to you no. today but somewhere in the future like even if nothing <laughs> <laughs> even if nothing turns out yeah. from that direct in, interaction on a macro scale mm. if you do it with everyone it's going to work out yeah yeah run. of course man i mean um, yeah it's, it's that it's that mm. it's almost like michael jordan quote what's uh, that the michael jordan quote man the um i think it's michael jordan the, the one we you, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take that's a good one have yeah. you not heard I've, that heard one? Of, I've heard of it i've yeah, heard of it yeah um <laughs> yeah but that's that's that's, that's the principle in action right?